So here we want to find the average value of the function over the given interval and all values of x in the interval for which the function equals its average value. And our function is f of x equals 9 minus x squared, and we're looking at the closed interval from negative 3 to 3 for that function. All right, so if we want to find the average value of a function on a given interval, we have to know the definition of the average value of a function. And that looks like this. The definition of the average value of a function is 1 divided by b minus a times the integral from a to b of the function f of x dx. And for this definition, or for this integral, f of x is integrable on the closed interval from a to b. All right, so those values of a and b for the lower and upper bounds of the integral, and these two values right here are the lower and upper bounds of our given closed interval. And what it means for f of x to be integrable on that interval is that this function is continuous on this interval, including the endpoints. In other words, the function f of x is defined for every value of x on this interval. You can plug in any value of x on that interval into this function and get a real result. All right, nothing undefined or anything like that. So that's the definition of the average value of a function. When we set up this integral and solve it, what it's going to give us is a value that will be the average value of the function on this interval. And I'll show you what that means and what that looks like visually at the end of this problem. But first, let's set up this integral for our specific scenario and solve it. And then we'll take a look at what the average value looks like visually for our function. Okay, so remember, our function in this case, f of x, is 9 minus x squared, and our given closed interval is from negative 3 to 3. So if we want to calculate the average value of this function on this interval, we need to set up this integral down here. First thing that we should do is identify our values of a and b. a is the lower bound of our interval, and b is the upper bound. So in this case, a is equal to negative 3, and b is equal to positive 3. And then, of course, f of x is equal to 9 minus x squared. Okay, so let's set this up. We're going to have 1 divided by b minus a. So that will be 3 minus negative 3. So I'll write 3 minus negative 3. And then we multiply by the integral from a to b. So we'll have negative 3 to 3. And then our function, f of x, is 9 minus x squared. So we'll have 9 minus x squared. And then don't forget to multiply by dx. Okay, and so now our next step is to simply solve this definite integral. And then once we've done that, we will have the average value of this function on this interval. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is simplify this expression right here. 1 divided by 3 minus negative 3. Those two negatives will cancel out. Subtracting a negative number is the same as adding the positive version of that negative number. So this is 1 divided by 3 plus 3. And so that will give us 1 sixth times the integral from negative 3 to 3 of 9 minus x squared times dx. Okay, so now what we can do is actually work on integrating this function. We have a very simple polynomial expression here. We can integrate each of these terms individually. First, we'll integrate this constant of 9, and remember that the integral of a constant is just that constant times the variable of integration, which in this case is x. We are working in terms of x here, and integrating with respect to x, that's what dx tells us. So what we'll have here is that this is equal to 1 divided by 6, or 1 sixth, times 9x, that's the integral of 9, and then the integral of negative x squared, we can integrate that by using the power rule of integration. We add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. So we'll have minus x cubed divided by 3, right? 2 plus 1 is 3, so we have x cubed. And then we divide by that new exponent of 3. And so then we can close that and evaluate that integral or evaluate that antiderivative. That's what we just found, the antiderivative of this function. We can evaluate that from negative 3 to 3. Okay, and so let's do that. What we need to do is first evaluate this expression at 3 and then subtract the evaluation at negative 3. So this will be equal to 1 sixth times 9 times 3 minus 3 cubed divided by 3 minus 9 times negative 3 minus negative 3 cubed divided by 3. All right, so we plugged 3 into this expression. That's this right here, 9 times 3 minus 
three cubed divided by three, and then we were subtracting plugging negative three into this expression, which is what we have right here. Remember to subtract both of those terms. That's why I have parentheses around them, not just that first term. You want to subtract both of them, okay? So we have nine times a negative three, and then we're subtracting negative three cubed divided by three. Now, if we simplify, this will be equal to one sixth times nine times three, which is 27. So we'll have 27 minus three cubed divided by three, and three cubed is 27. Three cubed is three multiplied by itself three times. So three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. So we have 27 divided by three, which will give us nine. So we have 27 minus nine minus nine times negative three, which will be negative 27. And then we are subtracting negative three cubed divided by three. Now negative three cubed will be negative 27 because negative three times negative three is positive nine, but then we multiply by another negative three to get negative 27. So we have negative 27 divided by three, and then we can close that. And if we simplify further, 27 minus nine is 18. So this is equal to one sixth times 18 minus negative 27 minus negative 27 thirds. Negative 27 divided by three is negative nine. In fact, I'm just going to rewrite that here. That's negative nine, but we're subtracting negative nine. So that would be the same as adding nine to negative 27, which will be negative 18. So we're subtracting negative 18 and then those two negatives will cancel out. So we'll have 18 plus 18, which is 36. So this is equal to one sixth times 36 and 36 divided by six is six. So this is equal to six. Six is the average value of this function over this given interval from negative three to three. Okay, so that's the solution to the first part of this problem. We found the average value of the function over the given interval, but we also wanna find all values of x in the interval for which the function, this function right here, equals its average value, that average value we just found of six. And so how do we do that? How do we find all values of x in this interval for which this function is equal to that average value of six? Well, what we have to do is set this function equal to six and then solve for x that will tell us the values of x for which this function is equal to six. So let's work on that next. We're going to set six equal to our function nine minus x squared, all right? What that does is allows us to solve for x, which will tell us the values of x for which this function is equal to that average value of six. So the first thing I'm going to do is add x squared to both sides of the equation. So we'll have x squared plus six is equal to nine. And then if we subtract six from both sides of the equation, we'll have x squared is equal to three, right? Nine minus six is three. Now, if we solve for x, we need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And that will give us that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of three, right? The positive square root of three or the negative square root of three would be the square root of three. You need to account for both the positive and negative value that result from that square root. And so we've solved for x. It looks like we only have two values for which this function is equal to its average value, but we need to make sure that these two values of x that we found are actually on our given interval. We need to make sure that they are between negative three and positive three. And if you looked at the approximate value of the square root of three, as well as the negative square root of three, it's approximately equal to plus or minus 1.7321 and some more decimals, okay? So it's safe to say that 1.7 in the positive or negative direction is in between negative three and three. It doesn't go beyond negative three and it doesn't go beyond positive three. So it's on the interval, which means that we can conclude that these are the only two values of x for which this function is equal to its average value of six on this closed interval. Okay, and so that answers the second part of this question. And so we're pretty much done here, but one more thing that I wanna show you is what this average value looks like visually, as well as the points on this function that have that average value. And so if you were to look at the graph of this function, it looks like this, this upside down parabola is nine minus X squared. And we're specifically looking at the values of X for this function from negative three to three. So that would be from here 
to here. And so if you look at this function, when we're saying that the average value is six, we are saying that on average, the value of y that corresponds to these values of x is six. That's the average value. And you can see that that's true. Here I have the two points plotted that include that average value of six. Those two points that we just found with these values of x, we have negative square root of three, and then the average value of six as our y coordinate, and then the positive square root of three with six as the y coordinate as well. These two points are on this function and they include that average value of six. But if you were to look at the y values of the other points between these two values of x, for negative three, the y value is zero. For negative two, the y value is somewhere in between six and nine. For negative one, the y value is also in between six and nine. And the same is true for positive one and positive two. Their respective y values are also in between six and nine. And then for three, it's zero. And so you can see just by looking at those integer values of x, that it makes sense that six is the average value. Now, of course, we could look at many more values of x in between negative three and three, not just the integers. And you would be able to further see that it makes sense for six to be the average value of the function. Essentially what we're doing here with this calculation is finding the area beneath this function f of x from negative three to three, right? We're finding the area underneath this curve from here to here. And then we're dividing that area by the difference between the bounds of our interval. Okay, so that's really all we're doing when we calculate the average value of a function on a closed interval. And so with that, that is the end of this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you found this video to be helpful, be sure to check out some of my other calculus tutorials that you can find on my channel. I have a whole playlist covering a majority of the topics in Calculus 1 that you may encounter. And so I would encourage you to check that out if you like this video and you want to learn more about calculus. Okay. But with that, if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.